Greetings everyone, Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Favorite Guitar Solos. Today we're going to take a look at my 10 favorite solos from one of my favorite guitar players of all time, Mr. Robin Trower. Uh, and I apologize if I'm a little kind of subdued here today because uh, I just heard of the passing of Ken Hensley, former um, keyboard legend from Uriah Heep and Blackfoot and Wasp and great solo artist. Um, kind of gutted. Kind of got it over that, and uh, there'll be a separate show on that, so stay tuned. So, um, back to Robin Trower. So, I've been listening to this guy since the late 70s. He's probably one of the first, definitely the first three guitar heroes that I really kind of latched on to, and I've, I've loved him ever since. The guy is still going strong into his 70s, and, you know, I took a look, you know, I was thinking about, uh, man, how am I going to pick out my favorite solos from this guy? Because I love so many of his solos and songs, and there's so many albums. But the more I started to look at the discography, uh, you know, it started to make sense. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I think I have a really firm grasp on which are my absolute favorites. I mean, I love lots of them, but there's some that just, man, I just keep going back to and I have been for decades. So let's get started here with my number 10. So I'm going to go to the uh, the Victims of the Fury album, which is that one right there. Uh, and I'm going to go with a song called Into the Flame. All right, so this is kind of like Robin's like uh, searing slow blues, and let me tell you something, he does searing slow blues quite well, uh, and this solo is made even more dramatic by his use of the wah-wah, I love how he kind of like builds and builds, and we're going to talk about that a lot during the course of the, this, this episode here, uh, how he builds and builds, kicks into intensity, steps on the wah-wah, and psh, boom, there it goes. And in this solo, you can feel his soul pouring into every single note that comes out. So just a fantastic song, fantastic solo. I love it. All right, next up. Uh, did I even put it? Here we go. Number nine. I'm going to go with uh, SMO or Samoa, which is from the Long Misty Days album right there. Uh, this is just pure, unbridled, raw funk. It's just, man, and it's just, as you can imagine, you know, because it's the 70s and a lot of funk guitar stuff is just chock full of wah-wah. And I think his use of the wah-wah is just absolutely brilliant on this song. And it's just, this song's got so much groove and it's just this raw, funky, uh, just intense guitar jam. Really, really good. So SMO or Do You Want Some More? Wow. Uh, what do we got? So coming up at number eight, we're going to go to... The, did I even, nah, I didn't pull it, sorry, from the Bridge of Size album, all right, got the CD up on the shelf, a song called The Fool and Me, all right, screaming, screaming licks, uh, and whether he's on this album, I know he uses the Univibe and also uses the Phaser on a lot of these recordings, I'm not sure exactly which one on this, it might be the Phaser, um, and the licks are just absolutely bursting through the speakers, just screaming, bordering on feedback, right? He was excellent, always been excellent at doing that. Um, so much emotion. It's real bluesy, but yet it's really funky. It's got lots of rock firepower. So The Fool in Me from Bridge of Size is my number eight. Coming in at number seven, we're going to go back to that uh, Victims of the Fury album. All right. That one right there for a song called The Ring. Uh, man. Screaming wah wah guitar solos don't get much better than this. All right, it just it's absolutely furious and just it's like it's like he's playing and, and he's just giving you every bit of his soul when he's playing and uh, just oh man, just such an incredible song. And he's just dripping, you know, just letting these solos. I mean, the whole song has got all sorts of fills and leads, and then the solo just comes in, just explodes. And man, his crybaby wah is just weeping all over the place. Just absolutely amazing. So good. All right, my number six, we're going to go to the King Biscuit Live album, King Biscuit Flower Hour Live album, uh, for the version of uh, Bridge of Size on here. One of the things that I, I always loved about Bridge of Size when played live is he would throw in like an extended guitar solo on the live versions that you don't really get on the studio version. As brilliant as the studio track is, I love the, the live version on here because it's extended and he really gets to kind of stretch out. But the thing is... On this solo, it's all about the notes that he doesn't play. 
you know, it's just like it, as much as it is about the notes he does. He leaves so much space between each note. I mean, the vibrato, the vibrato and all those, the bending he does, just, it's just, the solo just screams to the heavens, but it's not like, uh, like I said, there's so much space there. So much space there. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. So Bridge of Size from the King Biscuit Flower Hour comes in at number six. All right, next we're going to go to, as soon as I find it, uh, my number five is going to be Benny Dancer from Back It Up. Eight and a half minutes long. Um, this could have been even higher on this list. This is, uh, you know, again, an album that I think most people kind of forgotten about. It's, uh, you know, one of his early 80s albums, but I think it's probably, it's the last one with Jimmy Dewar on vocals, and it's a really great album, but Benny Dancer is probably his most savage extended solo ever. And it's kind of housed within this kind of simmering, slow, psychedelic blues tune. And the vibrato is just absolutely amazing, you know. And he's got, you know, the effects piled on. It's just every note is just like, oh, just absolutely incredible. And it just goes on and on and on. It's just beautiful at every step of the way. Love it, love it, love it. Benny Dancer from Back It Up coming in at number five. All right, so coming in at number, where is it, where is it, where is it? Coming in at number four, we're going to go to the BLT album. Bruce Lord and, and uh, Trower, okay, Jack Bruce. Uh, no Island Lost, all right, that's the uh, BLT right there. Uh, no Island Lost is like, um, yeah, again, they, they, they went for a little bit of a cream feel on a couple of tracks on this album, which was really cool. And I think uh, No Island Lost has some of his most ferocious wah-wah solos ever. I mean, he's got the fuzz cranked up to 11 which is really cool. These solos just scream on this entire song. And he's and he's doing it throughout the entire song. I mean, the, the ending solo is, is absolutely blistering, but he's just, man, his tone on this is just, if you love Cry Baby Wah Wah with fuzz behind it and a guy who knows how to play that Stratocaster and wrangle every bit of emotion out of it, uh, No Island Lost is killer. I always just wish it was longer. It's like three minutes and 25 seconds or something like that, if that. I was like, give me another minute. Give me more. Give me more. So that's my number four, No Island Lost. All right, my next <clears throat> three choices, my top three, are all going to be from the same album. Uh, if you guys have been following this channel for a while, you know I have an um, amazing love and have for a million years for the Robin Trower Live album from 75, which was recorded in Sweden. It's that album right there. <clears throat> and I think some of my favorite Trower stuff is from this album. I just absolutely love it. My number three is Little Bit of Sympathy. Uh, again, I know it's sounding a little redundant here, but great use of the Wawa. And I love the slow build of this solo. And then, you know, he, and, it, and it's, a, it's an extended version of the song. And then he absolutely explodes in this wild finale with hammer ons and pull offs, raw emotion, then kicks in the Wawa again to close it all out. And it's just like, wow. It just takes you on a journey. It's just absolutely incredible. So a little bit of sympathy, my number three. My number two, also from this. The, the slow, moody epic on the album, I can't wait much longer. Uh, so much emotion. I, just, I, lo I mean, it's just dripping emotion. You got the subtle use of Wawa, <clears throat> and as much as I love the first solo in the song, which is really, really cool, the final solo, so you got two great ones here for the price of one, just absolutely explodes, just tears the roof off. And when, I, when someone can put that much emotion into a song that just literally just goes, boom, you got to love it. Great use of the Wawa and feedback. That's another thing I want to mention, especially on, the, on some of the live recordings, especially this album. Man, he is such, has such control of feedback. It's unbelievable. And you just, when he throws, you know, gets that little bit extra and you hear the feedback starting to come and he controls it and brings it back down. Amazing. Amazing, you know, and again, they probably got that that influence obviously from Jimi Hendrix. Uh, he's a big fan of Jimi Hendrix, but uh, man, Trower just does that stuff so well. And my number one favorite solo, also from this album, okay, it's also a track from Bridges Size, uh, Two Rolling Stone, killer, 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 uh, so sublime. I love the way it builds in intensity. He's got, again, he's either using the Univibe or the Phaser. I think he's using the Phaser on this album. Uh, and then he kicks in with the Wah-Wah. Again, that effective use of feedback. It's bluesy, but has tons of rock firepower. And it's actually uh, two Rolling Stone on here. It's one of his faster solos. I mean, I mean Trower can can blaze when he wants to. He's, he's never been about all that. But, man, this solo on two Rolling Stone here on the live album, he's blazing. 
he's blazing. And I could just I could listen to this album over and over and over again. I think one of um, my musical life's greatest disappointments is that this was not a double album, uh, the live album specifically. By the way, this album ain't bad either. <laughs> and yeah, I, uh, ironically, I did not pick any songs from Four Earth Below, uh, and there's a reason for that. I love Four Earth Below, and it's probably my in my top two, if not my favorite, Robin Trower album of all time. But I think for me, Four Earth Below is less about the solos and more about the vibe. The Univibe. <laughs> Univibe and the Huawei and the riffs and the general, just the groove. I mean, the, the songs kick ass on there, but less about, like, the guitar solos and more about just everything else. So that's why there's no... You know, I had a couple that I was considering from Firth Below, but I think uh, some of the ones I chose I like quite a bit more. So there you have it. So coming in, number one, Two Rolling Stone from the live album. Number two, I Can't Wait Much Longer from the live album. Number three, A Little Bit of Sympathy from the live album. Number four, No Island Lost from BLT. Number five, Betty Dancer from Back It Up. Number six, Bridge of Size from the King Biscuit Flower Hour live album. Number seven, The Ring, Victims of the Fury. Number eight, The Fool of Me from Bridge of Size. Number nine, Samoa from Long Misty Days. And number 10, Into the Flame from Victims of the Future. So there you have it. So feel free to list your favorite Robin Trower guitar solos. Uh, in the comments below. Curious to see what everybody comes up with. Uh, you can't really go wrong with any answer, right? Because this guy's got some amazing, amazing solos housed within some amazing, amazing songs. He's had an illustrious career. He's a musical treasure. We love him. Thank you, Robin Trower, for all this great music. Keep bringing us some more. Uh, visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. We'll see you more with some great stuff. So we've got uh, coming up tomorrow morning, Martin Popoff and I will be ranking the studio albums of XTC. Chris Allen and I are working on our Nightwish ranking the album show as well as uh, Epica that's coming up soon too you're going to have more Monsters Den probably this weekend and uh, all sorts of tasty treats happening so uh, stay tuned more favorite guitar solos in the next one I'm doing uh, I'm working with uh, Guitar Hack we're going to do an Alex Lifeson show and I'm going to also do a favorite guitar solos of Tony Iommi from Black Sabbath that's all coming up real soon so stay tuned for all that and uh, we'll see you then bye bye